Doctor, I bring in all the wishes and greetings to Dr. Isha for scoring CML rank 1, AML rank 1 in the field of uh, critical care medicine in any session 2023, June session. Congratulations to you. Best wishes to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can we know the background history of Dr. Isha from where she started until date, what she has done? Uh, I've done my UG from Medicity in Hyderabad, sir. And uh, right now I'm doing my, uh, like I just finished my MD from uh, like anesthesia from Tata Memorial Hospital, Mumbai. Doing my senior residency right now, like part of my bond, about eight months in. So I'm right now in Mumbai itself, completing that bond. Doctor, why critical care medicine? <laughs> I'd actually planned from it from a really long time ago. Uh, like even before I started anesthesia, that was one of my primary goals to do critical care. I think, you know, um, it's the fastest way I can serve a lot of patients at once. So that was always like at the back of my mind. I really love anesthesia. I'm not running away from anesthesia. This is not my gateway essay away from it. But um, it's just that I feel like I have, hopefully, I hope so, that I have the potential that, um, you know, I can help a lot more patients that, like, you know, at one time. I like that acute emergency feel of it i feel like you know it's a very satisfactory process so that is what make, is making me right now wanting to do critical care opportunity to save lives yes, definitely so. <laughs> now critical care medicine background of anesthesia was your primary exam an ess exam or neat exam it was actually in ESS. When I finished md i thought like i wouldn't be like smart enough to actually crack these exams but because it would be part of like practice, I wrote in ESS in November, thinking like, you know, I'll understand the pattern and everything. But when I wrote last time, I got qualified and I did the interview and I got Rishikesh uh, like critical care teams. So then I thought, okay, this is maybe a doable thing by me. Like it was sort of like a, you know, a wake up call kind of thing. So then I planned now from November onwards, like from December, I actually studied for the exam thinking that, you know, it is something that is uh, trackable for me because I'd also written NEAT and NEAT seemed very like crazy for, with all the general medicine and everything. I had written that also and like, I think I got like 50th in critical care for uh, NEAT, but then I thought, you know, this is, I mean, I would not want to pass a chance to not write AIM. So that's why I've written this time. So that was the process. I believe you understood about this exam in depth. Yeah, definitely. I've written two exams in the past, uh, like three exams are in the past eight months. So I was like completely in the zone of critical care. Now, you want to do a critical care medicine in Ames, New Delhi? Yes. Sir. So that was the target? That was the target, yes. Definitely. So now you tell me Ames, Rishikesh, doable last time. I need to assess a decent rank doable last time. Yes. Yeah. Now, how did you achieve that point first? I mean, of last year performance. Actually, sir, in our hospital, we're very like, uh, you know, already um, like we do critical care for like three to four months in a year. So Tata Memorial is generally, you know, known for its critical care uh, background. Not as much as the DM critical care uh, residents, obviously, but we do have like two to three, three months in a year. On top of that, we had COVID. So then we had even additional months, which was like seen as negative by others, but it was a huge opportunity for me. I'm surrounded by really good seniors, consultants who like love critical care and they're always like, you know, trying to, you know, radiate all of that love on me. So that is kind of always been something that I wanted to do. So as soon as my MD exams were over, I was like ready to get onto that whole bandwagon of doing critical care. So I've been preparing since first year only out of like, like leisure study, I want like something I enjoyed doing. Like, oh, when I go to the ICU, I don't want to seem like I don't know what is going on. So I would read basic things, not something I can do, but it's very some basic. And that would be discussed by all of our like DM residents who are there already. So our seniors would be discussing it. We'd always have like USG and X-ray discussions, ABG. These were things that were going on already in our like system. So it's something that has come like... Uh, naturally actually because of like the hospital that has come from so you are already living in critical care yeah yeah to some extent not as great as the already existing residents but yeah to some extent 
so when it comes to exam uh, so there is always uh, a balance is always required to what we achieve through our clinical practice and what we achieve through standard textbooks meant for exams so how did you strike that kind of a balance so like i said the first year second year i did read like a, a few months i had given like almost a year of my time would go for critical care studies so basic book all me washington all of that i've done in first and second year when i came to third year i stopped reading critical care because i had anesthesia exams also so I went back to miller arc those basic anesthesia books anyways anesthesia has so much of like emergency related things So ECG, arrhythmia, ACLS, DLS, all of that was anyways a part of our like you know anesthesia curriculum. So third year went in that, and as soon as my SR ship got over, like I like I said, like once I wrote one need, then I was like okay, I really need to prepare. When I got into like you know taking speed, seeing the videos, question banks, all of that from like December onwards, I have been completely doing that. Were you able to complete? Were you able to complete all the videos? Yeah, yeah, I was able. I had done from December to March, so like I'd keep like a plan of four five videos per day. They were really helpful. So I would watch the videos, uh, you know, fa- as fast as I could. If there was a, something new that I already like did not know, I would add on to my notes that I had. I say, and I would uh, write like exams whenever they were there online. I would do those questions. And, yeah, so it's proper exam prep happened for like three four months. So did you prepare for general medicine also? No, I was actually trying very hard not to. <laughs> that was my plan all along. When I did like the first uh, from like uh, August September, I did by Harrison. I thought I'll do like you know crazy medicine things, but I did only CBS RS, which I was comfortable with. And then I you know went into critical because care. Because it is related to critical care hardcore. Yeah, yeah, again. Yeah. So your preference of towards any SS was just to be only in critical <laughs> care and anesthesia and to. Yeah. Not to go into general medicine proper. Yeah. So all the eighty patients are only from uh, critical care this time. Uh, yeah, so it was uh, like out of the eighty questions that were there, almost sixty uh, of them were critical care based only, and then anesthesia questions came for the rest of the twenty. There was pediatric anesthesia um, questions that were there. There were like spinal regional questions, all difficult uh, anesthesia questions, but there were like twenty of them. The rest sixty were core and like uh, critical care questions only. So all were in your comfort zone. That means anesthesia of twenty questions, critical care of. Yeah, is a mixed day. Correct. So now, uh, very important question I want to ask you from AIMS, Rishikesh, and fiftieth rank of NEET SS last time. How how it helped you to migrate uh, today to rank one for not to say of rank one also to AIMS New Delhi. <laughs> Actually, it's a really funny reason, sir. My fiance is in Delhi right now. And I'm like work really hard so that I could stay with him after I get married. So like you know everything would work out geographically. We'll be in the same position. Actually, that was my biggest inspiration as to why I wanted to go to Delhi. And I mean, that was, that was reason number one. That is reason number one for sure. So yes, okay. definitely. So the Rishikesh uh, leaving wala thing was only for that. He like you know I wanted to be in Delhi. And then if I'm putting so much effort, I want to do it in the best institute possible. Like why not? You know, like I can have dreams too, and be like aims really can I much go? So that is why that was the only thing that was there. So. And I'm I'm very inspired because I mean, how someone could uh, conceive this? That means uh, I mean from because people generally get settled with what they have in hand at first, first so that because next exam is very unpredictable. I mean, whether it will happen, it will not happen. Even one or two questions go wrong in the competition, and there are chances that it may not happen. But I really could appreciate the kind of confidence that you had in yourself, not in the exam or anybody else, in yourself, and and to move on from there uh, is uh, really commendable. And uh, and and we, we as a team and from speed, we are really looking up to that kind of a confidence level. Anybody can prepare. But to pre- I mean, the self confidence has been very important to achieve. One, I mean, it's really amazing. Then how did you conceive that? So that's the things where like my family was extremely supportive. I really thought that you know without studying, if this was just my trial, like you know, I that that was the initial thought process that this is just going to be. I'll understand the exam patterns. 
So when I wrote the exam, and I really thought that it was possible. Like I've reached interview level. If I it didn't go well, my interview, I was like, you know, not able to answer as well as this time. So, but then I really felt like, okay, I've reached till here. I don't see other people around me doing the same thing. Like you know, I've not studied as much. Whatever basic, what I have thought is basic is helping me. So I really have to try anyways. And I still had my bond period. I'm, it's not like I'm wasting my time. So I continue to work also. Again, surrounded by like you know clinical experience in ICU and stuff. That I felt like you know I I could do it maybe. Like just it was just a dream. So I say I myself am very surprised that it has happened. I still am not really able to grasp my head around it. So you determined to do this, and it happened the way it 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 wanted to happen, and has to happen for you. And when it happened, right? I mean, because people will dream a lot and may not happen for most of them or some of them. But when you had that and it happened for you, I mean, kind of that moment, yes, is the uh, moment or the best moment in ever in your life. Of uh, yeah, yeah. I think this is the very first time that I dreamt of something and it actually happened. Like I've always been like adjusting and being like, okay, fine, maybe I did not get the round, but now I'm happy in this and that kind of thing. But this is like the very first time that I've thought of something and it actually has worked out so like easily. Um, did not think of it for sure. <laughs> Still, like I said, I'm very surprised myself. I mean, I I strongly believe this uh, interview and uh, this story would inspire many, okay. and uh, and people will definitely uh, look up to you. The kind of the self confidence and uh, the kind of hard work behind it and and what is the message that you want to leave uh, to the juniors and aspirants of critical care medicine from the black and of anesthesia i just hope that people like don't think that critical care is like uh, supposed to be better than anesthesia this is something that i really like believe uh, very strongly like anesthesia is an amazing branch like i'm feeling so sad that this might be like the last two three months that i will have to do like you know pure anesthesia and easy it's not like supposed to be some branch where you are trying to escape or like it's not good enough or something like i've done uh, like so much of good work around so many amazing people and i'm just using this as like a stepping stone to like the next step just cuz you know it's something that is um, you know interesting to me that's it i just hope that people don't think like you know oh medicine chahiye to use anesthesia as a like you know uh, way to reach over there that's one thing for sure and like you said um, i guess everyone can try you know this is the best for, like i'm the best person for that to be like yeah we should maybe believe in ourselves a bit more and you know surround ourselves with really nice people with like amazing parents and you know nice partners and friends who really support you all throughout the process So yeah, and then everything will just maybe hopefully work out. Whatever you uh, wanted to achieve, does achieve you achieved and you have got it, and now you are the I think one of the happiest person at, at this point of time. <laughs> right whatever, now, whatever, yeah. whatever you wish uh, that could come true for you as well, and for the people around you as well, and people are watching this as as well, and uh, we request your best wishes for those aspirants. Or doing for need assess. I mean, we want to hear your wishes for them. For sure. I mean, hard work. You can just you cannot like not have good outcomes like without hard work. If you just work hard, you're a good person. I believe good things do happen to good people. So like it is going to work out. Even if it takes time, it will happen for sure. I hope everyone you know continues to work on their goals and you know on their dreams because everyone deserves to be. Like, you know, I mean, the dreams that we have are to serve other people. So why not just do it? I mean, they're such good. Yeah. And talking to you is uh, truly inspiring and truly motivating. And we wish you all the best and all the success uh, for your career in critical care medicine. And keep inspiring as always, like this. And best wishes to you once again. Thank you.